All right, debt ceiling vote. Here's the truth. Why I voted yes. I do know that it would have been a lot easier to vote no. I could have voted no and um, been quiet about it. I know there's a lot of people who are very upset about it. Um, the debt ceiling vote always makes everyone upset because it, it, it makes folks feel like, like it's an affirmation of uncontrollable debt. I'm going to explain the logic here and, and what a debt ceiling vote really means, um, why you always have to take it, and what we actually got out of this to, to change the trajectory of the debt. There's some really important things to factor in here. So there's a lot of Republicans out there saying it, it's a bad deal, that it's unacceptable. When we assess a bill and we call it good or bad or unacceptable and therefore we can't vote for it, we have to define what we're comparing it against. It's good compared to what? It's bad compared to what? Because that's always the thing in politics. It's always a yes or no. And so if we're going to say it's bad, well, bad compared to what? I suppose it's bad if you compare it to what could have been if we had you know, Ronald Reagan resurrected and president and 60 votes in the Senate, then it would definitely be bad because it would be so far short of what we could accomplish. But we can't compare it against that reality. We have to compare it against the reality that is true. And the reality that's true is that we have a very small five seat majority in just one chamber. We've got a Democrat president who's very progressive. We've got a very progressive Senate. That's the reality we're operating in. So. In that reality, it's really hard to say that this is a bad deal. I mean, hell, we got more out of this bill. This is a pretty historic amount of savings during a debt ceiling negotiation than we got when we had a Republican president. Donald Trump presidency in 2019 had a clean debt ceiling. I voted against that. I voted against all of the debt ceiling bills, three of them, since I've been in office, because they were all clean. Never vote for a clean debt ceiling. Here's another truth. You have to raise the debt ceiling. You don't have a choice. For, for anyone out there who thinks you don't have to raise it and that's the way to rein in spending, this is not true. Unless you're willing to put on the table Social Security payments, Medicare payments, veterans payments, defense spending, unless you're willing to put all that on the table. Now, no one is. President Trump's not willing to do it. He advocated against that before this. President Biden won't do it. It was, it was never on the table. So it was on the table for this specific negotiation was all of the spending on things like the EPA or the IRS and, 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 all, and the DOE and all of that. Non-defense discretionary is what that calls. So how much is that for total spending? It's only 11%. So you're only negotiating with 11% of the budget because that's what everybody wants, including Republican voters, President Trump, President Biden, everybody. So you're only negotiating 11%. So you have to be realistic about what you can actually extract from that. And truth be told, quite a bit was extracted from that. A trillion and a half dollars, uh, almost two trillion. It's not nothing. Also some really good policy, policy like environmental process review reform, which will be massive for our energy sector and just building infrastructure in general. That's a huge win for the American people. Let me tell you how many wins the Democrats got in the negotiation, zero. They asked for tax hikes, they got none of it. All right, they asked for cuts to defense, they got nothing. They asked for defense, non-defense, discretionary parity, which means dollar for dollar. If you spend this dollar on defense, you got to spend this dollar on the IRS. Didn't happen. We crushed them on that. Our negotiators walked out of that deal multiple times and made them come to the brink. And we are at the brink. Now, you do have to raise the debt ceiling. Otherwise, all of your 401ks just evaporate. It's not like shutting down the government. It's a pretty serious deal. We can take the government shutdown to the brink. Debt ceilings are different. Our credit gets downgraded, stock markets plummet, your 401k evaporates. It's a serious deal. And so you've got these multiple truths. You have to pass the debt ceiling and we have to take care of our debt. And so we're going to attach that demand to the passage of the debt ceiling and see what we can get. And we got a lot and Democrats got nothing. They can't sell anything back to their constituents. Not a single thing. I know they're out there trying to do that, but they can't because they got nothing. And so I have to logically go through this. I have to say, okay, look, I know we have to pass a debt ceiling at some point. It's, it's imperative. Otherwise, the country economy actually crumbles. I have to assess whether we can get a better deal. 
That's a key question. Could we have done better? And many are saying, well, it could have been better because they look at all the provisions we did get and they say, well, but it doesn't do all this and this. It doesn't secure the border. It doesn't cure cancer. It doesn't give Dan his right eye back. No, it's true. It doesn't do any of that. But it does a lot. And it, every single thing it did do, the Democrats didn't want it. Every single item. Does it do enough? Of course not. But we have to deal with the political reality we live in, which is an extremely small majority in only one chamber. We cannot compare our success to a reality we wish were true. We have to compare it to the reality that is true. And so based on just that basic logic, it's not so much about nitpicking what's in it and what we wish were in it. It's about the logic of, of where we are politically and what we can accomplish. And it's really hard to argue that we didn't accomplish a lot. This is, if you've talked to members who've been here a long time, this is the most conservative legislation they've ever been able to vote on and actually make law. That's saying something, and that's coming from very far right Freedom Caucus members who understand that this bill is actually worth fighting for and actually worth getting ahead. And I want, I want to leave you with this one last thought. If every Republican decided not to vote for it, decided to say, you know what, we could have done better and we, we got to push even harder. If every Republican decided not to vote for it, what would be, what would be the obvious consequence of that? It would be a clean debt ceiling. Let me tell you how this would work. Every Republican votes against it and the bill fails. Bill fails, okay, we go back to the negotiating table, but we're not actually going back to the negotiating table because what's going to happen is at least it only takes five Republicans to sign a discharge petition and agree with Democrats for a clean debt ceiling to avoid economic catastrophe. There will be five Republicans that do that. They're generally from very blue districts. They're voting their district, just like I vote my district. And those Republicans would do that. They've already said they would do that. The Senate would go along with it. We know this, like we know this based on their statements. And then you get a clean debt ceiling and all of the wins, even though they're not the wins you wish they were, all of the wins we do get in this bill, they evaporate, they disappear. And then you get another clean debt ceiling, just like we've gotten the past three debt ceilings. That's unacceptable. As imperfect as, as, as this is, and it will always be imperfect, right? It's always easy to say, look, here's my standard and you didn't meet it. And I'll just keep pushing it up. That's the easiest thing in the world to do, but I won't lie to you. I just won't. Politically, it'd be much easier for me to tell you, you know what, I found some problems in it and I just can't vote for this. Politically, that's so much easier to just vote no, um, especially with, 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 with my political reality the way it is. Much easier to vote no, but I just can't lie to you about it. Just can't. So there's the truth on everything going on with the debt ceiling.